Welcome to Tech Photo Blog. This is episode number 45. This week I'm going to be demonstrating a use case for the motion sensor. So the case I'm going to be going over is a racetrack where people want to take photos of people at a certain place in the race or at the finish line perhaps. And this is a question that's been asked quite a few times and uh, I used to recommend using a laser and a light sensor to sort of set up a, a laser beam trigger that people would trigger as they're about to cross the finish line. But that requires <clears throat> setting up the two devices and they need to be very accurately aligned. Uh, I've tried setting up a similar situation here with the motion sensor and I found that it actually works quite a bit better. This sort of setup will also work very well for nature photography where you're trying to take pictures of, of deer or something in your backyard in a certain area. So anyways, let's get to the uh, setup. So here's the data sheet for the sensor that I'm actually using here. It's a sonar sensor. You could actually get this sensor from SparkFun or a few other sites on the uh, web. I also sell it in our store and I packaged it into a little case and put a, a 3.5 millimeter jack so it can just plug in directly to the uh, camera axe. But for people who want to make their own sensors, uh, it's pretty easy to put one of these together. And one of the more interesting bits is down here at the bottom. This is uh, sort of how uh, you can sort of see. This is for a very, like a one inch dowel, and this is for a three inch dowel, and then this is for a speculative, highly speculative uh, foot wide board, basically. So this is kind of approaching what a runner would be, uh, but I think that a runner is much bigger than the three inch diameter uh, dowel they're using here, so it would probably extend out a little farther. Uh, in my testing, I found that it's pretty reliable up to 12 or 14 feet, which is, uh, you know, out to here-ish, a little bit farther. So it does, my, my testing sort of uh, yields pretty res expected results. So now I'm gonna go over the camera axe settings that you need to take this type of photo. So I have the camera plugged into camera port number one, and I have the motion slash distance sensor plugged into sensor port number two. And if we look over at the menu, we've got uh, device number one, which is the camera, using sensor number one, so that's good. The delay, we'll leave that at zero. You need to factor in that uh, the camera is going to have a delay here uh, due to the shutter lag and that's going to be 70 milliseconds or greater and there's really no way to get rid of that when you're using a camera. For the bulb setting I'm going to change this to 1 so this basically means that you'll be pressing or the camera axis will be pressing the shutter button for about one second and if you that the results of that sort of depend on what mode you have your camera set to. If you have it set to single shot, it'll take one shot. If you have it set to high speed continuous, it'll probably take four to ten shots depending on what how fast your shutter can activate uh, on your particular camera. Pre-focus, this will uh, re reduce the uh, shutter lag that I mentioned up above. Um, if you set this to yes, that but it will drain your camera batteries more quickly. So I don't mind a few, it's usually a few hundred extra milliseconds uh, to start your camera up if it's not being pre-focused. And this doesn't just mean pre-focusing, you can use this when your camera's in manual mode. It just prevents your, your camera from falling asleep in this particular case. If, if you wanted your camera to actually autofocus, then I'd, I'd more strongly suggest that you set this to, to yes. But uh, in my case, I'm gonna leave that to no because I, I'd i rather uh, save the battery on my camera in case, you know, might be doing a lot of shots or something. And it, it responds fast enough without that set for what type of uh, shot I'm going for. Uh, the trigger type you, for this sensor, uh, you can figure this out by experimentation, but I know that I wanna set it to low uh, and basically, um, oops, this uh, menu or this sensor uh, is, is sort of 
has its maximum value right now and that's going to be 500 and what I want to do because I'm triggering when the the signal goes low is I want to set a value under that so I'm going to set it to 490 so it's basically the maximum distance uh, which turns out to be about 14 feet uh, for this sensor and if you wanted to like like let's say you had a a crowd of people that were 10 feet away you could sort of figure out what value they're triggering let's say it's like 350 or something then you could set this value the trigger value to 350 and then the crowd of people wouldn't trigger it but when somebody runs closer to it uh, to, to the distance sensor then it would still trigger the the camera so there's a lot of flexibility here you can also hook up a second motion sensor if you want to have two different uh, thing uh, areas you want to photograph you can hook up a second camera there's there's tons of flexibility here with the camera X I'm just sort of going over a, a simple setup uh, the power setting doesn't really matter in this case so that's the uh, settings you want to use with the camera X now one thing I haven't discussed much in the past but is actually quite important are the settings that you're using on your camera some of the things that you want to consider for this type of shot are you probably don't want to use full manual unless you're sure the lighting conditions aren't going to change and then you want to decide between probably shutter priority and aperture priority and you'd use uh, shutter priority if you know you need to keep up the uh, shutter speed at, at a fairly high value and you're willing to go with dip, different depths of field and you'd use aperture priority if you want to set a certain depth of field and you're, you're pretty sure that the uh, lighting is going to be sufficient to, to capture and freeze the motion that you're trying to freeze. Another thing you want to consider is do you want a single shot mode for your camera or do you want to put it into multi shot or even high speed multi shot mode and lastly I always consider whether I can use autofocus and I, I prefer to do that if if I'm, I can get a large enough depth of field but if I can't do that then I'll have to put it onto autofocus and, and if I use autofocus I usually select the uh, pre-focus to, to be on on the camera X because that does help uh, focusing sooner you know, for these kinds of shots and you're less likely to miss them but the most important thing to do when you're doing this is to make sure you test your setup before an important event to make sure that you you know what settings you want to go to the field with and and you're pretty confident that they're going to work well so now I wanted to go over the quick calculations I did to determine whether this is a sensible sensor for the type of uh, shot I'm going after. And basically all I did was I, you know, I'm trying to photograph some people running past the finish line. So I figure the fastest people will be running is around 10 miles per hour. And uh, that equates to 15 feet per second. I know the sensor sample rate is 20 hertz from the data sheet. So that means that... Uh, they will be traveling three quarters of a foot or, or nine inches between samples and you know that for my particular case is more than accurate enough so I'm happy with that number and if you wanted something more accurate you could use the the laser trigger that I've done in other episodes but this is a lot easier to set up and you don't have to worry about handling the alignment of the two sensors so for my use case I'm going with the distance sensor and I think it's going to work great. Let's try it out. Thanks for watching.